Okay, so let's get started. Welcome everyone to our talk about the Hyper API and about automating data connectivity to solve real business problems. My name is Jonas Eckert. I'm a product manager working for about two and a half years for Tableau now. And you could say that I built great products. Awesome, thanks Jonas. Uh, Justin Craycraft, I am a, a senior pre-sales consultant. So I get to work with our customers and help them adopt our technology and hopefully play a, a small part in their success. Uh, and I've been with Tableau about six years in this role. Of course, I enjoy speaking at conference, but what I most enjoy in this role is just getting um, in front of customers and helping them solve real uh, problems. And that's where I want to start today's session. I want to look back at a customer experience that we had, and mainly a customer down in Houston called Texas Children's Hospital that leverages uh, the Hyper API. So this is a, I started working with a doctor down there about three years ago and she needed a way to get data into Tableau. And so we explored a lot of different opportunities and now she is leveraging the Hyper API, but this is a special doctor, a doctor that treats patients during the day, goes back to her office in the evening, does analysis in Tableau desktop and uses APIs. Treats patients, does analysis, uses APIs. And so this is her, her name's uh, Dr. Barbara Jo Acuff and she is an attending physician down at Texas Children's, so she's in their cardiac ICU and at their heart center. I think they're rated number one in the world as a children's heart center in the world by US News. And she's also uh, an assistant professor at the Baylor School of Medicine, so she does a lot of research and she applies that research to improving the quality of care, the health care that she delivers to these patients, and she's singularly focused on improving uh, the quality around sedation best practices. So these are her patients, and they come into the heart, heart hospital uh, requiring many different procedures in some cases. Born with congenital heart defects where they have to go undergo open heart surgery. And to treat the kind of the pain and the trauma that goes along with their recovery process coming in and out of these procedures, they have to sedate them with really harmful narcotics, things like you've probably read about in the news, uh, opioids, fentanyl. And she had, as you know, tasked with improving the quality of care and their outcomes, she, went, she started with this first question is, how many of these drugs are we giving to these children? And um, nevertheless, she hit some data access roadblocks, as you would imagine, in a very governed healthcare environment. And as you look at these systems, they're, they're leveraging the best that technology has for healthcare, right? So they have these infusion machines, and you can see those with the monkey in the top left. So that is essentially a rack of infusion machines. And the first thing that's unique about those is it's very different from a bolus dose. So when you take a Tylenol that's 200 milligrams and you take it at a point in time, it's very different from a continuous infusion which is actually intravenously supplied, administered to the children, patients, but it's a rate over time. And so all of these, other, the, the second challenge is, is you will see that the other systems, there's you know, respirators, there's vitals machines, these are all closed systems. They don't take the data, generally speaking, and put it in a database for analysis. Not only that, there's not really in their EMR where these pharmaceutical records reside, there's just the prescriptions, their patient charts, the procedures that they undergo, but those don't have a concept of a cumulative dose. So if you think about a rate over time, and those infusion machines are essentially administering that drug. So when they, when they get the uh, prescription, they insert what is like a, almost like a syringe. It's like this little tubular thing. You can see it up at the top left, and they program that machine to do that rate over time. And so now they have to do some math. They have to figure out the route. They have to calculate, uh, you know, the, um, some, some factors that translate how they interpret those metrics as well as the time deltas between those records, when they start and stop, when they increase or decrease, and do a bunch of math to create a new data model for analysis that would support this use case. So fast forward to today, 
she's now leveraging the Hyper API to get that data, put it in a Tableau for analysis. She's launched an entire program called STAR, which is a sedation targeted assessment and review. And she's published numerous publications, all powered by Tableau, with her results. And she's now speaking around the country and world on this framework that she put in place to teach other providers to be able to do this for their patients and increase their quality of care. And the success is, you know, reducing the, uh, you know, the exposure to these harmful drugs, uh, which obviously eliminates or reduces some of the risks associated with those, the complications, the, uh, the you know, the exposure to addiction. Um, and she's also reduced the length of stay. So these children are now getting home to their families after these procedures much sooner. Uh, so I wanted to start off with just the background of one of the use cases. In a few slides, we're gonna jump into the technical details of how and why they use the Hyper API, but I wanted to start there. Uh, and we're gonna go a little bit off script at this point, and I might get in trouble for this, but the doctor who I'm speaking about is right here in the audience. Would everybody give her a round of applause? Stand up, stand up. What an awesome treat. So she actually gave a talk uh, in 20, uh, TC17, and she gave a talk uh, today, actually. So you obviously missed it, but it's gonna be recorded, so you can go back, and if you're interested, uh, check it out. I would encourage you to. Um, and so we're gonna go ahead and get started. So we have uh, two goals for the session. First and foremost, to drive awareness of our APIs. Uh, what we speak to as part of the uh, Tableau platform and the developer tools, uh, as well as our number one goal would be to get you to download the Hyper API and hopefully what you learn in today's session with some live demonstrating of how to use the Hyper API, you can actually go home today, download it, and run through the examples yourself. As a bonus to that, it would be even more awesome if you could apl start applying the Hyper API to solve some of your problems in your projects. Um, so those are the two goals, and this is how we want to, how we think best we can get you there. So we're gonna cover the developer tools, which is a collection of all of our APIs and describe how each of those are used and how we think about them. We're gonna focus on the web uh, or the data connectivity APIs, which include three APIs to access data. So there's the connector SDK, the web data connector, and then the hyper API. Then we're gonna focus the remainder of today's session on the hyper API. We're gonna do uh, some customer use cases, including one, another one from a different customer and a partner and how they're leveraging this API. We're gonna go through a de demonstration and then how to get started in, in resources. So just curious in the audience, how many of you have used an API before? See a, a show of hands. Okay, looks like we did some good marketing. Uh, and then how many of you have used a Tableau API? It's a really good mix, awesome. Well, just a little bit of background for Tableau is we've been singularly focused since we came to market with Tableau Desktop is helping people see and understand their data. And this is just an expansion of that and we've really you know, added new products and new capabilities to help with that. Um, so things like server as a way of sharing the visualizations with your audience, uh, as well as prep and prep conductor to actually take your data, shape it, clean it, run those workflows on server, but really getting that data clean and to the analysts so that they can uh, create visualizations. We also, in addition to those products, we've evolved with the capabilities that we can allow our customers to interface. Uh, mainly the Tableau de developer tools, which is collectively representing all of our different APIs. So we've put them in these buckets, and we like to think about uh, the bucket of automation and integration. So really anything that you can do, if you log into the UI within Tableau server as an administrator, and manage Tableau Server. So things like provisioning users or deprovisioning users or migrating content. You can do all of that programmatically using the REST API. 
We also have extensibility where you can actually write in JavaScript an extension for your dashboard and your content. So you can write some little JavaScript, plug it into your dashboard, and now extend the capabilities of that dashboard. Things like natural language processing, custom visits, uh, dynamic parameters. And you don't necessarily need to write this yourself. You can actually go to our uh, extensions gallery, which is very similar to like an app store. And you can download one of these that a community member has created or a partner has created and plug it into your dashboards. We have integration with advanced analytics. So things like uh, interfacing with Tab Pi for Python or MATLAB server for MATLAB or R serve for R, which allows you to take a dashboard, pass data to your model, and then get the output of that and revisualize it within Tableau. Pretty cool. And then the embedding here is really encompassing three APIs. You need single sign-on for embedding. Uh, you need uh, to embed it with the JS API. And then you probably leverage some of the REST API to get dynamic content. This is all about taking your visualizations and embedding them into a third-party application and then powering your analytics that you deliv to d deliver to your customers uh, with Tableau technology. And then last, we have the data connectivity, right? So we have three APIs that I mentioned that collectively make up uh, the connectivity API. So we have the Web Data Connector, the Connector SDK, and the Hyper API. So that begs the question, if we have, you know, if you fire up desktop and you have access to 75 plus or 80 supported connectors, click, 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 connect to data, and you're analyzing data, why would you ever need an API to get data into Tableau? It's really for everything else. So it could be unstructured data. It could be coming from a web service. It could be XML or JSON uh, in the cloud. It could be you know, a spreadsheet or a data lake. It's really for everything else. And now I'm going to hand it over to Jonas. He's going to walk through and contrast how each of those APIs and data connectivity are used and the differences between them. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. So let's jump into our data connectivity APIs. So first, it's, uh, we have our web data connector. What is, what is the web data connector? First, we need to understand what is web data. Web data is really anything which is exposed by web service. Usually, a web service does not allow you to connect directly to their database. Right? But it provides an API, and with the Web Data Connector, you can access this API, create an extract out of it, and then analyze that data in Tableau. OK, so what do you see on this slide? On the left side, you see many services, from which I bet you know some of them, right, from the icons. Then, in the middle, there's uh, the Web Data Connector. And from this web data connector, you basically create a hyperfile, and this hyperfile is then, uh, and this hyperfile you can then analyze in Tableau. So with the web data connector, you can virtually create from any, um, you can virtually create uh, an extract from any site that you have access to. Right? Tableau provides built-in connectors. For example, uh, to, Tableau provides connectors to Tableau Sheets, uh, Google Sheets, Salesforce, Box, Dropbox, OData, and many more. But if you don't find the connector to your service that you want to connect to in this list of connectors, you can use the web data connector to build your own connector. But we, we suggest you to first look into the community. Because in, this, in the community, there are 70 plus web data connectors built from, from our community that uh, connect to all kinds of data, like weather data, or like social data, like Facebook, and many more. OK, then there's the connector SDK. When do you need the connector SDK? When, let's say you are a vendor, or um, your, your vendor, which provides a database with a JDBC or ODBC driver, 
And you want to customize the connector such that your users can simply use the connector in Tableau. Or you just want to use a JDBC slash ODBC database which you need to uh, customize. In that case, this is the situation for the Tableau Connector SDK. And with the Tableau Connector SDK, you can then define or customize UI elements needed to collect user input um, that you need for creating a, con a connection to that database, or like the dialect or uh, customizations needed for the connection. One good example for um, is um, for the Tableau Connector SDK is the Databricks connector. It was developed by Databricks by using the Tableau uh, Connector SDK. And finally, there's the Hyper API, which is also part of what we refer to our data connectivity APIs. I like to think of the Hyper API as the Swiss army knife of our data connectivity APIs. Because you can do almost anything with it. Again, on the left side, you see your data. It's generic, it can be anything. And in the middle, this is where the magic happens. This is, <laughs> uh, this is your application which uses the Hyper API to create from that data an Hyper Extract, which you then can use in Tableau to analyze that data. You can talk with a Hyper API, you can um, talk to web data like you can do with a web data connector. But you are not just limited to this. You can, you can talk to basically anything that you have access to, pull that data and create an extract out of it that you then can analyze in Tableau. Another thing that I would like to mention here is that technology partners also leverage the Hyper API to integrate their applications into Tableau. For example, Alteryx uses the Hyper API to create Hyper Extracts and now also read data from Hyper Extracts. And that, okay, good stuff. Let's summarize. Let's compare all the three APIs in one slide. I know there's a lot of information on that slide. So, the slide shows our data connectivity APIs and c compares them, um, compares the use cases, the outputs, the programming languages, um, the integration into Tableau, how to share them, and also we see some examples at the bottom. So in my opinion, the most important thing for those um, APIs is that with the web data connector and the connector SDK, you build a connector that you then can use in Tableau as all the other connectors that's, that we have. However, the Hyper API is different. With the Hyper API, you, you create an extract, but you need to manage this extract by yourself. Finally, we can see some examples here. So um, for Web Data Connector, we have Marketo, ServiceNow, um, Connector SDK, as I said, the um, Databricks Connector, MariaDB, and for the Hyper API, um, I have listed two um, the technology partner here, Alteryx and Informatica that use the Hyper API. Okay. so. This talk focuses on the Hyper API. Let's jump a little more into detail, details of the Hyper API. So the question is, when do you want to use the Hyper API? Sorry about that. So you can use the Hyper API when you or your customers have data sources to which, you, to which Tableau does not provide a data connector. In that case, you can use the API to create an extract from that data and um, push it to Tableau such that you can analyze it in Tableau. Or let's say you have a custom ETL process. It's in Python, say. And you want to integrate the outputs of this custom ETL process into Tableau. In that case, 
use the Hyper API to create this extract and publish it to Tableau. In other cases, you're a technology partner and you want to integrate your application with Tableau. In that case, you can also use the Hyper API to uh, create, create Hyper files, update Hyper files, or also read data from Hyper files. And finally, when you, have, um, when you just need flexibility for your advanced BI scenarios, let's say you have this um, incremental refresh that you want to uh, implement. In that case, you can use the Hyper API. I also want to quickly talk about the evolution of the Hyper API. As many of you know, there was the Tableau SDK and the Extract API before. But those two APIs only enabled you to create Hyper files, or TDE files in case of the Tableau SDK. However, when talking to customers, there was very often the request that customers just need more. They don't want to just create Hyper files, but they also want to get the, the data back from Hyper files. Or they want to update like some rows in the Hyper file or delete some of the rows. And this is what we now um, have in a new Hyper API. Because it does not only enable you to create Hyper files, but it all, uh, also enables you to execute or to, yeah, to execute CRUD operations on Hyper files. And with CRUD, I mean you can create the Hyper file, you can read data from a Hyper file, you can update data right within a Hyper file, and you can also delete data from a Hyper file. And how can you do this? The Hyper API enables you to execute SQL on Hyper files. Just think about all the things you can do with this. And apart from that, with the new Hyper API, we also drastically improved the extra creation performance and added functionality to directly create Hyper files from CSV files, which is just the fastest way to create a Hyper file. Now, back to the TCH example. So from, you know, up until this point, we've learned a lot about the platform, all of the APIs, how we think about uh, organizing the APIs into different bucket, buckets based on how they're used. Um, let's take a look, and we've covered, you know, of course, the data connectivity APIs. Um, and the significance there is that, you know, the uh, connector SDK and the web data connector, once you build one of those, you start the process in desktop. Now you can publish that up to server and it can refresh, but the process, once you complete building your, you know, your new connector, it, the process always starts in desktop. And the Hyper API you can manage completely outside of Tableau server. So as a bonus with the Texas Children's use case is that we just rolled out a proof of concept using the new Hyper API, which, you know, provides the, you know, the advantage of being able to do CRUD operations. But first we're gonna compare and contrast the current state with the future state. So this is what they currently have in production. This might look complex, it's really not. We're picking up data, we're creating a net new data model by extending that data model in a pandas data frame. It's just a Python library that allows you to work in kind of higher level objects like a data frame, which is akin to a table. So we add some columns and some measures and you know, dimensions, and then we take that and we write it to the hyper file. And finally, use the REST API to publish that hyper file up to Tableau server. So from beginning to end, the whole process is automated. They pick up the file, put it in hyper, put it up on server, and then all of the content that this powers automatically is already connected. They just overwrite the previous hyper file. So the content continues to live and get new data. Now this is uh, their new process. So this is kind of the proof of concept that just was completed. The advantage here is that they have the ability to do reads of hyper and updates of hyper and actually work smarter, not harder. And so what this, uh, what this illustrates is the process has only changed slightly. We're still picking up a CSV file 
But once we do that and we get about, you know, 5,800 new re patient records on a nightly basis. So once we read that new data, we can actually identify the unique list of patients by their IDs in, in healthcare, that's MRNs. And then we download the existing hyperfile, we look in that hyperfile and say, give me all the records associated with those patients, union that data with the new data, reprocess that, and then save it back in the hyper and publish it up to Tableau server. That minimizes the work that we're doing because now we're processing 60 to 100,000 records instead of 2.2 million, depending upon the hyper file because on an annual basis, it's just north of 2 million records. And a lot of these trends that they look at, they wanna look at it over time. So to illustrate this even further, this is their patient flow. So the y-axis is the volume of records and the x-axis is at the grain of a day. So each day, you can see the average line is like 5,800. So each day, it shows you the total number of records that they receive that are new. Um, the color actually identifies the cohort by when the patient was admitted into their, their hospital. And so the orange and the red represent uh, 2018 Q3 and 2018 Q4, respectively. And if, you, if your eyes go to the last, uh, the last column, the last kind of bar, all the way on the right side, you can see that there's just a few records, right, from that, those cohorts that represent the patients that were admitted in the second half of 2018. So really, excuse me, really significant gain there. And to kind of quantify this, um, you know, time to value, right? So we mentioned uh, some of the issues with being in a governed, restricted environment. It just so happened that it was easier to go get data that was, you know, through a third-party app provided by this SickBay app, rather than actually spin up an IT project to get another feed from their EMR and then do all this work in the data tier. So originally, the value that they got was they could do this now and they didn't have to wait for another team to execute on an IT project. The value that they're getting today using the new API, the newer version um, that they just completed in their proof of concept is the CRUD operations. So they've taken it even, uh, you know, kind of to the further uh, realizes, realization of value, just being able to create these extracts and do less work to create them. And that's reduced that from like 10 hours of processing to an hour. So almost a 10x increase in performance. Um, event driven, as soon as the data is delivered, we, uh, you know, grab it, start processing it, you know, build the hyperfile and publish it. Um, connect to third-party app data. So this just happened to be a CSV, but that's arbitrary at this point. It could have been anything. It could have been JSON or XML. We would have grabbed that data and put it into a hyperfile. Uh, and then extended the data model, right? So a lot of uh, data engineering today is really done in you know, different frameworks that have higher level object-oriented uh, concepts that you can apply to the data that make it slightly easier and less nuanced to do and extend um, without having to write that same sequence of operations in SQL. And then last but not least, the ability to take advantage of our REST API to publish it up to Tableau Server so that the whole process could be automated end to end. At the end of the day, they're picking up data, creating a data model, and powering their dashboards by getting it up to Tableau Server. So uh, what do you need to get started using the, the Hyper API? Uh, it's pretty simple, data, programming language. So we offer the Hyper API in C, Java, Python, .NET. Uh, any of those languages, download Hyper, install it, and, and write there just an IDE to you know, write your code. That's all you need to get started using the Hyper API. Okay, cool. Awesome. So let's get started with the demo. So the first thing that I would like to show you is how to, right, I need to quit the presentation mode, is how to download and install the Hyper API. So the first thing is um, just Google for Tableau Hyper API and you will land at, that, uh, at this page here. There's a lot of information that you can find here, uh, in particular, um, it links to a page where you can download the Hyper API, right? Then you need to pick uh, which programming languages, uh, which programming language you want to use. For example, this one is Java for Windows. 
or um, I'm working on a Mac here, so um, I would download this wheel file. We, we provide two packages for Python. One is a zip file with a setup.py, which you just need to execute, or a wheel file. And a wheel file is uh, very handy for Python because you can just use the uh, pip, so the um, uh, Python package manager to install it. I already downloaded this wheel file, and, just, and then you can just uh, execute pip install and the path to the file, and it's installed. All right, let's, uh, let's go ahead and create a database, and let's walk through let's that sequence that. of steps. Cool. You tell me what I do. Yeah, so let's create a database with our contact information. And I know they're interested, right? They might have questions after the session. So let's go ahead and create a database with our name, our email, and our title. Let's do that. So what you see here up at the top is obviously he's importing the Tableau API, right? The Hyper API and the modules that we need. And then he's going to start a process. So with the with statement, with the Hyper process, we're going to. How do we want to call the database? Uh, let's call that work.hyper. Work.hyper. Cool. So we call the with the with statement the hyper process to initiate starting up a hyper process, and then we pass in a parameter so that we can create or update. Then we start a connection and we identify the database that we want to connect to, and pass in the create mode. And now we can start defining the table definition, which is our schema. So things like what type of column we're going to enter, uh, and uh, the name of the actual database itself. So here's the table name. Let's call it extract.extract, .extract, as we usually do it in Tableau. Cool. So, so now we're going to uh, define the tables, or the, uh, the columns. How do we want to name the first one? So let's do uh, name as a text field. And then we'll do email as a text field as well. I'm going to make and my then life we'll, a little yeah, easier just copy here. Paste. Yes. We'll do a little bit of, um, and then one more column for years. So we, we'll change that to an integer. Yes. Here. And, and then one more for our title. For? Uh, title. Okay. Four columns to curveball. Let's do that. Cool. So first thing we need to do is to create a schema. Yep. So now that we've defined and called that connection connection, we call catalog create a schema, which is a method on that object, and pass in the, uh, the table name. Life coding is really fun. <laughs> cool. So now we have created a table. The first, um, we needed to create a schema because um, we wanted to put it in the extracted extract namespace. All right. Cool. So now let's insert some data. Yeah, let's enter some data. So let's just define that. You want to do a do that in rows of, of data? That's yeah. Good let's do point. that. And so we'll put some values in there. So let's call it data. D data, right. yep. Um, All right, so let's do, we could do Justin. Start with you. And my email is jcraycraft at tableau.com. Number of years at Tableau is six. And title is help customers do great with our products. Products. Got it. All right. Cool. Now we'll enter another row of data for Jonas. Let's do Jonas. 
You'll notice here with the iterator method within this, if you've ever used the, the, the kind of the previous version of the Hyper API, you had to actually for each column and row index uh, set the values. Now you can actually take an array of an array or a multidimensional list in Python and stack all your rows of data in there and then it will just take care of adding it to Hyper, which is really exciting. Cool. So now let's insert that data. So let's call add rows. We have multiple rows here. And most importantly, super important, let's execute. Execute. <laughs> okay. So let's do that. Let's ex uh, run the code. Let's see if I made and, an and error. Just to, just to kind of summarize what, what we've done here is first you import the libraries, then you establish a hyper process, you start that up. You, you create the, and define the, t the schema that includes the table definition, the columns, the data types those columns are, and then we pass some data in, and we're iterating over that and, and throwing all those rows and writing that to Hyper. So let's go ahead and open it up. And as you can see, I know it's a little small here, but we have the two rows in the Hyper extract. Great, That's, that looks it's good in. to me. Cool. That was just a few lines of code. That was awesome. Okay, so let's now go back and show some of the CRUD operations that we can do. So that was just something that you could always do is create new, you know, pass new data to a hyper file and create a net new hyper. Let's take a look at reading from a hyper file to demonstrate some of the new capabilities. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at what you have over here. I have private some hyper, what, private here. hyper. Let's take a look at that. Let's, let's go ahead have and create a, look a connection at private that. Oops. Okay, it's in a database folder in that case, so data So here we're starting up another process, another hyper process. Um, we're creating a connection, we're defining where that, uh, where that hyper file lives relative to where you're executing your code. In this case, we don't want to um, <laughs> create a file if it already exists, so we just connect to it. Yep. And now let's print. And the cool thing about the Hyper API is that it now allows you to execute SQL on that file. In that case, let's just do a select star. Select star from, now uh, let's use an F string to properly escape the table name. Right, uh, it would be extract, extract. Cool, let's see what's coming out when we do this. Ooh. Awesome. Okay, so Justin married Sarah. That's my wife's name. And then Jonas married Mai. Oh, that's already updated. It's <laughs> <laughs> All right, great. Uh, let's go ahead and make some updates. Can we add maybe a column to that? Yes, sure. Let's do that. So let's add when we were married. So this is obviously off script. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's let's do it. So execute command. Let's um, do an alter table. Uh, let's copy the table name. Uh, add column. Yeah, year of marriage, or yeah, just year. Yeah, years. Keep it simple. Yeah. yeah, I don't want to escape the column name. Let's see. I hope this <laughs> is working. <laughs> okay, so we're on Python 5. Is it, oh, is it locked? Uh, yeah, uh, obviously I need to give it a type. Int here. Yeah, it's fine. Or uh, either string, that way or, or way or around. Yeah. Yeah. So. Cool. So now we read again from that file and see. Run Python 5. Cool. And All as right. You can so we. See, yep. Yes. Yep. So one of the things in the new Python uh, 3x. So we're we're writing this code in Python 3, 3.7, I think to be specific. Um, 
the, the null value type that you would actually store when you write a hyper file, there's no value, it's the Python type none. So you saw that return. And so far you're doing great for going off script here. And now let's update the table, set year equals, we just average. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so I just got married, so that means uh, zero years for me and you. I, you know, four years ago, so you know, so, 2015. And let's say it's, uh, we just set uh, the year to two for everyone, right? And then let's select, and then let's print it again. Print it again. Uh, cool, let's see. Update table, what did it? There we go. We just created a hyperfile, read from a hyperfile, updated a hyperfile. And a round of applause for Jonas live coding. We did go off script. This Thank was supposed much. to go a different way. <laughs> yeah. We had been rehearsing and he did not update uh, his, yes. his marriage status and it, the joke was supposed to be, wait, you just got married. So uh, anyways, we went off script. <laughs> he already had the value of married updated, so we were able to pivot and you made it through without sweating too much, so great job. All right, so back to, back to a few more customer or, uh, examples. So a customer and then a partner. Uh, we have about nine minutes left before we want to take Q&A, so I'm going to run through this um, in an in a abbreviated fashion here. But Netflix, everybody knows Netflix, right? Most of us, you know, everybody knows Netflix. Most of us use Netflix, I would assume. They have about um, 120 million to 140 million subscribers. So some subscribers, and their, um, this use case is really around their data content engineering team. So this is their data landscape. It looks really complicated, but they use Kafka, Apache Kafka, to kind of process all their live data and take that event data off of their platform and they pass it to S3 and then it eventually goes into Hadoop and then they process that. The cool thing about this is they measure and track everything that you do when you log into the app, if their recommendations are working, so if you start a recommendation and you, you, know, you don't finish it or you abandon it, what recommendations work because they're all after licensing the right content, right? And so they spend on an annual basis billions of dollars uh, you know, trying, to, uh, trying to license content. They spend billions of dollars licensing content for that subscriber base and they wanna make the, you know, the, uh, buy the right content to make it the stickiest experience and not lose subscribers. So there's a lot that goes into this, and we mentioned one of the key differentiators with the Hyper API is you can actually execute all of this off server. So if you think about it, at the scale of you know, 100 plus million subscribers, they get 60 petabytes of data on an annual basis. And that data flows again through Kafka, S3, Hadoop. If you wanted to make it available for your analysts, you know, Hadoop's not that performant, even, even if you have some of the, the query engines on top of it. So how they did this is they actually wrote an application where their analysts could go in, fill out a web form, identify the data that they wanted, and then they could basically provision a container with the Hyper API, with a connection, pull the data in, process it um, on an EC2 instance within that container, deploy it to Tableau server as soon as it's finished using the REST API, and then they uh, delete, you know, destroy, that container and, and you know, reallocate those computes. So if you think about it at this scale, this is one of those use cases where you've, you, you kind of have really open-ended possibilities using the Hyper API because you can completely manage the entire process. And these computes don't step on each other because you allocate a compute to a specific container so they're isolated. So each job, if I go in and, and they have hundreds of analysts pulling data out of Hadoop, now they can do it at the scale without interfering in each other's requests. So here's some of the benefits that they've achieved. Obviously big data, 60 petabytes. We often hear customers describe big data and we ask well, what is big data and it's not big data. Uh, so much so that we had a campaign for April Fools talking about medium data and how that was gonna take over. Uh, but 
we like to have fun with it. So anyways, the scalability, big data, petabytes of data, real big data, isolate the compute, right? Do that work off of Tableau because you don't want to waste all those computes that, are, that could be idle on Tableau server for most of the time unless there's you know, a lot of analysts coming and creating uh, extracts. So this is really powering their total solution very efficiently. Um, accessibility, they wanted obviously each of their analysts to be able to get access to data and get it into Tableau as fast as possible. And then last but not least, it's an agnostic framework. So you might be talking to you know, Hive or Presto or Spark today, but as they adopt a new technology, they just create a new connection for whatever code base they're using and off they're going, plug and play, and it'll still do the same process, allow their analysts to get the data into uh, Hyper um, at that scale. So this is, uh, you know, equally as valuable is the Hyper API to our customer base, it's also valuable to our partners. And what's really cool about this is, you know, many times when you have technology partners, in many cases they might be interfacing with a private API. And so this is actually Alteryx, who they have, if you're not familiar, most of you probably are, but they allow you to run uh, automation around ETL and automate those workflows. And obviously they have a lot of mutual Tableau customers and they want their analysts that are running these workflows or others that are running these workflows want a way to get the data into Hyper. And, um, you know, at the scale. So they're actually using our public API, the same API that you're using the same API that Netflix is using at this scale in a commercialized product, I think speaks to the robustness, but they've just announced that they're actually adding the new capabilities, the full CRUD operations within the next release of their product, which is really exciting because if you look at their customer forum, the number two most popular highly voted uh, feature request was the ability to read hyper files. So we're really excited because we've been able to deliver on that and, and now they can actually attach to within those automated ETL workflows the ability to read data from Hyper as well as do updates and writes. So in conclusion, this is kind of what we've covered so far, the developer program, data connectivity APIs, Hyper API, um, and then how some of our customers and partners are using the Hyper API. A, a wonderful demonstration that went off script but kept on moving forward. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk to the developer program. Yes. I just, uh, I just wanted to um, quickly also advert the Tableau Develop uh, program here. So um, when you join the Tableau Developer program, you will get access to a free development site, obviously also early API access. Um, you uh, will get access, or <laughs> basically uh, you can, uh, you will get access to our developer community. And um, you will also be the first to know about our new APIs that we, we will bring out. And you can wake up the T-Rex in you, so. But this is really cool because you get updates, you, we send you out emails, you can get access to betas, yes. so early access. And if you start adopting this technology, you're going to want the latest and greatest because we're constantly innovating and there's new features and you can actually even provide us uh, some feedback when you test those new features out. Okay, so we also um, have a, uh, so we are on GitHub. That means you can ex um, see what we do on GitHub at github.com slash tableau. Uh, when you want to um, uh, join the Tableau developer program, go to tableau.com slash developer slash tools. There's also an overview of all our developer tools and we are also on YouTube, so just go to YouTube. Okay, so these are all the resources. We actually provide a PDF version of this deck, so I would encourage you to, um, I know you took some pictures, but download this, this could be a good getting started. Um, so if you go download the Hyper, uh, package, there's some documentation, these are links, kind of short links, but you can get a picture, or get this. Um, it'll link you to the help pages to kind of get you started. In the kind of the help pages, when you download the Hyper API, there's also examples. So you can download all those examples and literally there's scripts for each of these steps that we went uh, through, you know, the full CRUD operations. 
the first step would be just executing those examples and then maybe extending them. Use Superstore, you know, data sets that you're familiar with. And then hopefully we've encouraged you and inspired you to kind of, you know, give this a shot uh, at the very least, but apply it to some of your, your own projects. And last but not least, please uh, also complete the session survey in the mobile app too. Yeah, there's a, there's a survey, it gives us feedback, it lets us know if we hit the mark uh, and if you, you know, found this content helpful and relevant. So yeah. really appreciate you attending and we'll open it up for Q&A. Yes. Cool. So awesome. thank you very much. Thank you.